Good evening, yes, friends. Welcome to daily newspaper analysis of Shankara Ace Academy. Today's date is 17th February 2025. In this video, we are going to discuss four important news articles. The first article is about the bio bank in Padmaja Naidu Zoo. So, in this article discussion, we are going to discuss about the bio banks and their basics. The second article is about the coral reefs and about the Gulf of Aquaba. The third article is about Pradhan Mantri Dan Danya Krishi Yojana. The fourth article is about the A enabled camera systems in Simlipal Tiger Reserve. So, these are the four important articles. We are going to discuss this in prelims exam perspective. Now, let us get into the discussion. Now look at this article, AI enabled cameras have been deployed in Simlipal Tiger Reserve in Odisha in order to combat the poaching. These trail guard AI cameras detect movement using artificial intelligence in order to identify the objects such as animals, humans and vehicles. The system has significantly helped to arrest poachers and seize illegal weapons. So this ensures better forest surveillance with the help of artificial intelligence. So this is what this article is talking about. In this context, let us discuss about the Simlipal Tiger Reserve which is discussed here and also about the use of artificial intelligence in the wildlife production. Firstly, about the basics of Simlipal Tiger Reserve, it is located in Mayurbanj district in Odisha that is in northern part of Odisha. It is surrounded by high plateaus and hills with Megashmi as a highest peak. It is declared as a tiger reserve in 1956 and it is included under Project Tiger in 1973. This Simlipal Tiger Reserve is also recognized as UNESCO Biosphere Reserve in 2009. So this is a part of World Network of Biosphere Reserve. Now regarding the terrain and vegetation, it has undulating hills, open grasslands and wooded areas. The type of forest is Northern Tropical Moist Deciduous Forest. It also has Semi Evergreen Forest. Sal tree is the dominant tree species in this tiger reserve and mostly sal species of tree is found in these areas. Now regarding the flora and fauna and biodiversity of the Simlipal tiger reserve, the major mammals like tiger, leopard, guar, elephant, spotted deer, sloth bear are found here. Smaller mammals like langur, mangus, pangolin, flying squirrel, porcupine are also found here. Reptiles like python, monitor lizard and turtles can be seen here. Regarding the cultural significance, this tiger reserve is inhabited by various tribal communities. The tribal communities like Kolha, Santhals, Bumija, Gondas, Kadia, Mankadia tribes are found here. Now let us see about the AI based surveillance which is set up in Simlipal Tiger Reserve. The trail guard AI which has AI cameras are deployed all over the tiger reserve. So around 100 to 150 cameras are installed across the tiger reserve. These cameras are equipped with motion sensors. So they detect the movement using AI technology and classifies the images into categories. So regarding the movement, they categorize the images as humans, animals and vehicles. So in order to classify these uh, kind of uh, humans, animals and vehicles, they use the movement. So this is what this trial guard AI is about. And if a potential threat is detected, the camera transmits the image within 40 seconds to official for this fifth action. So this enhanced production helps to uh, prevent the poaching and illegal activities. So this helps wildlife officials to track the poachers and also prevent illegal hunting. So these trail guard AI cameras not only detect the movement of uh, humans or illegal activities, but they also respond to them by informing to the authorities. So they sig send signals, the warning signals to the authorities. So the authorities can take action at immediate. Now there are also other AI based surveillance systems for wildlife production in India. For example, the Panna Tiger Reserve in Madhya Pradesh, Bandagok Tiger Reserve in Madhya Pradesh and Kasiranga National Park in Assam also use AI based surveillance system. So they are real time surveillance system which monitor and also informs the authorities. Now let us see some of the key government initiatives regarding the wildlife production in India. The most important one is Project Tiger which was launched in 1973 and it is uh, the initiative of government of India to protect the tigers and their habitats. This Project Tiger is implemented by National Tiger Conservation Authority. So this is to reduce the human tiger conflict and also to combat poaching. Initially 9 tiger reserves were established and today there were more than 50 tiger reserves. So this is a centrally sponsored scheme under government of India. Next one is Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. So this provides a legal framework for wildlife conservation in India. This prohibits hunting, poaching and also the trade of endangered species. So this Wildlife Protection Act categorizes uh, four schedules based on the conservation status. 
schedule 1 2 3 and 4 the schedule 1 has highest protection with the strict penalties the schedule 2 has strong protection with the slightly lower penalties than schedule 1 the schedule 3 has protected species with the lesser penalties and schedule 4 has protection of plants this wildlife protection act was recently amended in 2022 and there were originally more than four schedules and it was reduced to four schedules next is tiger conservation authority that is ntca this authority was established in 2005 under wildlife protection act of 1972 as i said earlier this national tiger conservation authority also oversees the project tiger and the management of tiger reserves in india so they ensure the scientific monitoring of tigers and their habitats this national tiger conservation authority also conducts all india tiger estimation for every four years now let us discuss a prelims practice question consider the following statements about project tiger it was launched in 1973 to conserve the tiger population in india yes the statement is correct the project is implemented by national tiger conservation authority yes the statement is also correct india is home to 90 percentage of world's tiger population due to this initiative this statement is incorrect because india is home to only 75 percentage of tiger population not 90 percentage so the correct answer for this question is option a 1 and 2 only because only the first two statements are correct so with this let us conclude the discussion and move to the next news article now look at this article a recent study has revealed a fascinating study about the coral reefs in gulf of eilat the research indicates that these coral reefs underwent a remarkable 3000 year long shutdown in growth so this period of stagnation in coral growth is believed to be the result of temporary drop in sea levels so despite this prolonged drop in sea level the reef actually bounced back with the coral species migrating from deeper waters so this showcases the remarkable resilience of coral ecosystem so this is about this article in this context let us discuss about the basics of coral reefs and also about the gulf of eilat this gulf of eilat is also known as gulf of aquaba this gulf of aquaba is a narrow northeastern extension of red sea it lies between the sinai peninsula which is in egypt to the west and the arabian peninsula to the east so the gulf is bordered by four countries on the western side it is bordered by egypt and israel on the eastern side it is bordered by jordan and saudi arabia so look at this map you can see clearly this is gulf of aquaba and on the western side it is bordered by israel and egypt and on the eastern side it is bordered by jordan and saudi arabia so it is a extension of uh, red sea into egypt israel jordan and saudi arabia so this is the gulf of aquaba which is also known as the gulf of eilat now let us discuss about the coral reefs these coral reefs are underwater ecosystem which are also called as coral polyps and they are soft bodied creatures which live in large groups and secrete hard skeletons and these skeletons are made up of calcium carbonate and they form the structure of the reef so this calcium carbonate of the coral skeletons form the structure of the reef and they extend over many kilometers the coral polyps have a special relationship that is a symbiotic relationship with a microscopic algae and this algae was called as zooxanthellae this algae will provide the food for the corals through photosynthesis and in turn the corals offer algae a safe place to live and to access the sunlight so this symbiotic relationship is determined by the corals offering a place to live and the algae offering the food using photosynthesis the coral reefs are mainly found in warm and shallow waters and they are mostly seen in the tropical and subtropical regions now coming to the types of the coral reef there are three important types one is fringing reef next one is barrier reef and the third one is atolls the fringing reef are located close to the coastline so these reefs are separated from the shore by a narrow shallow lagoons barrier reefs are situated far from the shore and they are typically found along the continental shelf they run parallel to the coastline but are separated from it by a wide and deep lagoon so this is about the barrier reef the difference between the fringing reef and barrier reef is that the fringing reef lies closer to the coastline and they are only separated by a small narrow water but the barrier reef is separated from the coast by a large body of water or they appear far away from the coast now coming to the atolls atolls form on the mid ocean ridges and they have circular or oval shape so they are completely surrounded by sea and they also have a shallow lagoon in the center the atolls are mostly in circular shape and they have a lagoon in the center so this is about the types of coral reef now let us see about the 
suitable conditions for the growth of coral reefs. The important one is sunlight. The corals need sunlight to survive because the algae inside them needs the sunlight to produce the food. So, in order for the algae to produce the food using photosynthesis, the corals need sunlight and they do not grow deeper into the water. So, they only grow in the shallower waters so they can access sunlight. So, the corals grow best in the shallow water where the sunlight can reach them. Next one is the presence of warm water. Corals can thrive only in warm water with a temperature between 20 to 30 de 32 degrees Celsius. So, they do not grow well in the cooler water. So, that is why they only appear in tropical and subtropical regions, not in temperate or polar regions. The next important factor for coral growth is the salt water content. The coral needs a clear water in order for sunlight to come through the corals. So, the dirty water or salty water or water which is highly polluted blocks the sunlight and this harms the growth of corals. So, the corals do not grow in the areas where there are highly salt water content or highly fresh water content. So, they need a right amount of salt for their growth. So, these are the important factors for the coral growth. Now, let us see the significance of corals. See, coral reefs are often called the rainforest of the ocean. This is because they host more than 70 percentage of marine wildlife species. So, they support a wide range of species including sponges, crustaceans, mollusks, fish, sea turtles, dolphins, etc. Coral reefs also act as a natural buffers because they protect the coastlines from the wave action of the ocean. So, they reduce the impact of cyclones and tsunamis just like mangroves. They also have significant economic value because they provide a rich source of fish and serves as a great tourist attraction. Now, let us see a few points about the threats to corals. Around one fourth of the world corals have been destroyed beyond repair. So, this is due to increasing temperature, the global warming and also due to the coral bleaching. Coral bleachings happen due to obstruction of the symbiotic relationship between the zooxanthellae and the coral reefs. This is due to increased sedimentation uh, and more global warming. The tourist activities like careless boating, uh, disturbing the sediments and collecting corals and fishing nets also damage the coral ecosystem. The urban and industrial waste which are carried by the rivers also poisons the coral reefs. So, these are some of the threat to coral reefs. Now, look at this prelims practice question. Coral reefs are highly dependent on certain conditions for their growth. Which of the following are required for the development of coral reefs? Look at the first statement. Sunlight for photosynthesis by algae. Yes, this is very necessary for coral growth. Warm water temperatures between 68 degree Fahrenheit and 90 Fahrenheit. Yes, warm water temperature is very much essential for corals. So, that is why they appear only in tropical and subtropical regions clean and clear water for light penetration. So, this is also correct. Fresh water influx from rivers. This last factor is not correct because corals need a right amount of salt water for their growth. So, the fresh water influx will lead to decline in coral growth. So, only 1, 2 and 3 are correct. So, the correct answer is option A. With this, let us conclude the discussion and move to the next news article. Now, look at this article. It is about the Prime Minister Dandaniya Krishi Yojana and this scheme was announced in Union Budget 2025. This was announced by Nirmala Sitaraman, the Union Minister. This scheme was based on the aspirational district program model. It focused on incremental progress, district level competition and also collaboration with the states. This Pradhan Mantri Dandaniya Krishi Yojana targets 100 districts based on low agricultural productivity moderate crop intensity below average credit access. So, these are the three criteria for targeting 100 districts across India. So, the three criteria were low agricultural productivity, moderate crop intensity, below average credit access. Now, what are the important objectives of this scheme? The main aim of the scheme is to enhance the agricultural productivity, to improve the crop diversification and sustainable practices among farmers. It also means to strengthen the post harvest storage at panchayat or block level. It improves the irrigation facilities and facilitating the access to long term and short term credit. So, these are the important objectives of this Pradhan Mantri Dandanya Krishi Yojana. The crop intensity is the key parameter for assessing the progress of the district. This scheme is expected to benefit more than 1.7 crore farmers across India. So, the nodal ministry for this scheme is Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare. And it is also supported by Ministry of Finance, Niti Aayog, Ministry of Rural Development and Animal Husbandry. As discussed earlier, this Pradhan Mantri Dandanya Krishi Yojana 
this scheme is modeled based on the aspirational district program now let us see some basics about aspirational district program it was launched in 2018 by niti ayog and it aims to transform underdeveloped districts by improving the key indicators so it focuses on the inclusive and sustainable development in 112 districts across india the core principles of aspirational district program includes 3c model the 3c means convergence collaboration and competition convergence means aligning the efforts of central and state governments by combining the schemes of central and state governments collaboration means involvement of district collectors and local administration at a grassroots level competition this is about promoting the rank based performance for encouraging the best practices across all regions so this is the basics of the aspirational district program and this pradhan mantri dhan dhanya krishi yojana is also modeled based on this aspirational district program which is not a focus area under adp health and nutrition education urban housing agriculture and water resources so the correct answer is option c urban housing the aspirational district program aims to improve the health and nutrition education and agriculture and water resources but it is not about the urban house so the correct answer is option c with this let us conclude the discussion and move to the next topic now look at this article darjeeling zoo has established india's first biobank this is in collaboration with center for cellular and molecular biology the aim is to collect and preserve the cell sample and tissue samples of various endangered animals so this can be used for future conservation and research so this is also called as frozen zoo which means storing the dna materials in cryogenic conditions so this is about the article all the zoos in india are established under wildlife protection act 1972 and they govern the establishment and management of zoos so this wildlife protection act mandates the species protection ethical treatment of animals and conservation efforts inside a zoo there is also a central zoo authority which was established in 1992 this central zoo authority was established under wildlife protection act of 1972 so this zoo authority regulates the operations accreditation and conservation programs in the zoo and they functions under ministry of environment now what is a biobank see a biobank is a facility which collects and stores and also preserves the biological samples such as dna cells and tissues from various animals so this can be for conservation or research purposes india's first zoo based biobank was established at padmaja naidu himalayan zoological park which is also called the darjeeling zoo as i said earlier this is also called a frozen zoo because it helps to preserve the genetic material of endangered species in cryogenic conditions now let us see about the key features of biobanks in the zoos the first one is genetic material preservation so the biobanks collects and stores the dna cell tissues for endangered and extinct species so they preserve the reproductive cells from deceased animals for future breeding programs the samples are stored at cryogenic conditions which means ultra low temperatures in liquid nitrogen so this is to maintain the viability of the cell tissues so this will also ensure long term preservation without genetic degradation the next important objective is biodiversity conservation so this conservation of animal cells and tissues will help to conserve species like red panda and snow leopard so this reduces inbreeding risk by preserving the genetic diversity the next one is scientific research and cloning so the biobanks support on the research for genetics and disease resistance they can be used for cloning purposes and assisted reproduction to restore the species population so this is the location of padmaja naidu himalayan zoological park and this is located in darjeeling now look at the prelims practice question consider the following statements regarding biobanks a biobank is a facility that collects stores and preserves biological samples such as dna tissues and reproductive cells for research and conservation purpose yes this statement is correct this is an obvious statement now look at the second one in india the biobanks in zoos functions under wildlife protection act and are regulated by central zoo authority this statement is incorrect because biobanks are not specifically regulated under any act the correct answer is option a one only with this we have come to the end of the discussion if you like the video please share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to shankar ais academy youtube channel thank you for watching